Hello, my name is Tom Fletcher, and today I'll be walking you through an example of using Storyboard I.O. to communicate between a Storyboard user interface application and an external application or process. The sample that I'll be working with today is available on the Crank Software Community Forum and entails a communicating application, the weather user interface, which will be communicating to a C program that we've written which represents a weather server. The communication uses our storyboard IO communication channels. The weather user interface generates event information indicating the city that we would like to get weather information for. The weather server receives this information and then generates the additional information back up to the user interface for setting the city name, temperature, and weather images within the user interface. This is an example of how you can use Storyboard I.O. communication to do bi-directional communication between a user interface application and any external process or task. Unpacking the sample from the community forum, you will find a Storyboard I.O. example gap file, which is our Storyboard Engine runtime file, as well as the sample source code for the weather server which represents our external processor task. If we change to the storyboard application, our storyboard designer, first thing we'll do is we'll do an import of the runtime component. Select our sample file from the forum. Here what I've done is I've created a modified storyboard IO example based off of the original example with a few components missing so I can show you how to hook up the storyboard IO communication infrastructure within the application. So we'll import our modified example and we'll name our example and we'll finish importing the runtime. What the import will do is it will create from the runtime a storyboard designer model file that we can use to graphically design the user interface, bind actions, uh, modify the user's look and feel, adjust text properties, uh, and more or less create the overall user interface design. So this is the basic user interface that we've created for our weather application. It has a simple text field. simple text field whose data variable has been bound so we can modify this externally by adjusting the city name property we have a temperature field whose value has also been assigned to a variable we have a graphical image field also assigned to a variable. These three variables represent the data that will be changed by the external server. In order to trigger the change, we have four buttons here representing three or four different cities whose temperature we would like to request from the server. In order to bind the temperature request into an operation, we will create a custom storyboard IO action. And we will add ourselves an action. We would like this action to be triggered whenever the user presses or touches on the button. So we'll use the standard GRE touch event. And we will bind it to a storyboard IO action. And here we need to fill in the parameters based on the communication 
that we are going to perform. The name is the name of the channel. The event is the name of the event that is going to be uh, generated as part of the storyboard I.O. message. The target is not uh, relevant for this communication. It would indicate a specific module or sub-target, sub-category uh, for the receiver. The format is the data format associated with uh, describing the data. So here we'll make this a string data format. And data is the actual data associated with the event itself. If we look at one of the other modules, we can see how they are similarly configured. <clears throat> Here we can see that the data payload is the city name. The event that we are generating is the change city event. We're generating it on the weather channel, which is the receiver channel that the weather server application process is running on. And the data format is 1S0 indicating that it is a one byte string based data payload. So we'll go ahead and we'll make a similar assignment for our Bangkok action. The name, we will enter in the name. event there these two storyboard IO events now match we will save our model and now we will create an appropriate runtime simulator configuration. Because we're communicating with an external application from within the simulator, we want to be explicit about the communication channel name that we will be binding for receiving events. So we want to make sure that we set this using the GREIO channel option. In this case, we simply name it the name of our runtime application file. Set the project configuration file information. And now we can run. Now we have our simulating, our runtime engine in simulator mode is running, but none of the actual communication channels are causing any work to be performed because we are missing the server process. For this, we will switch to Visual Studio as a C compilation and development environment where we've imported the weather.c application file provided within the sample. If we look at the main body of the application, we can see here that we are opening a communication channel for write our storyboard I.O. example. This will be the channel which we communicate to the application on. The channel that we are receiving events on is named weather channel and this is the value that we had configured within our storyboard application. So we will now enter into a receive loop where we receive an event from the weather channel, accept the data, and then act on the data payload associated with it, where we are examining and looking for a change city event, and then based on that value, setting the appropriate data and sending that new data back out of GREIO or Storyboard IO channel back to the user interface to set the appropriate data there.
Now we see as we generate our touch events on the user interface, a message is being sent from the user interface to the server application. The server application is receiving the change of city and generating the new temperature, image, and label information back to the user interface using two GRIO communication channels to provide a transparent and seamless interprocess communication mechanism.